Let's think about how we have affected the numerical solution procedure by creating this mesh. If I go, if I highlight mesh in the tree and go under statistics and expand the statistics, okay, it says the number of elements is 1,000 and the measure is using finite element terminology in, uh, in finite volume we call these um, cells. So we have 1,000 cells, so we've div divided the domain into 1,000 cells. And the nodes are the corners, um, these corners for instance. And if I, so let's see how that affects the, the numerical you know, solution procedure. So if I zoom in here using the right mouse button, the solver is going to calculate the velocity and pressure at the centers of each of these thousand cells. Let me mark out the centers of a few selected cells. So it's going to calculate velocity and pressure at that cell center, at that cell center, at that cell center, at that cell center, and so on. So it's going to have, for, so for, so you have 1,000 cell centers, and at each cell center, it's going to calculate two components of velocity and one component of pressure. So three variables, so into three, and that give, that'll give me 3,000 unknown values, okay? So what we have told the solver is find 3,000 unknown um, values of velocity and pressure, and we have marked out the locations at which the selected variables need to be calculated. The solver will have to solve a system of 3,000 algebraic equations, most of which are nonlinear. And in writing the algebraic equation for mass conservation for this cell, for instance, as we saw, it will relate the velocity at this cell center to the velocity at this cell center and the velocity at this cell center. So we can see how we have given it some key information about the numerical solution procedure when we have provided the mesh.